our services of this evening. Thank you so much for being here. Let's stay and turn to page 104 in your hymn book, page 104, Joy to the World. We'll sing just the first verse of Joy to the World. tonight, and on behalf of Bethel Baptist Church, uh, thank you for joining us, so many guests here this evening. I'm Pastor Jim Shahadi, privileged to pastor here, and we're excited about uh, this evening. Our, our crew here has been working hard in preparation for many weeks, really months, uh, first in choosing the, the, the selection for tonight for the program, and then all the practice that goes in preparation, and so we're excited about everything we're going to enjoy. Let me give a few announcements here uh, before we receive our offering. We're going to do that early tonight. And by the way, if you're a guest with us, we didn't ask you to come to give in the offering. You're welcome to participate, but uh, this really is for our, our folk. But if you are a guest here and did receive a Get Acquainted card, if you'll drop that in the offering plate when it comes by, we would so appreciate that. Let me remind everyone, please make sure your cell phone is silenced. If you put that on airplane mode or something like that, so that won't be a distraction. Uh, you don't want to be that that one, all right? That guy or that gal. Right now is a good time. If it needs to ding a ling down, this will work, all right? But it'll be fine. There may be a few that that happens with right now. That'll be that'll be just just fantastic. So uh, tonight's program. <coughs> Pardon me. It's that lingering cough. Uh, tonight's program is a reader's theater format, of course, with the choir singing. The message of the program is just fantastic. I hope that you'll pay close attention and, and hear it and enjoy enjoy each part. So let me uh, pray, and uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's do it the other way. Let's go ahead and the ushers come now, all right? We could pray twice, but we'll just pray once. All right. You know, when you do things out of the normal routine, your brain just kind of scrambles. And that's what's going on in mine right now, so that's, that's how that works. Uh, let's see, Brother Hotto, yes, Lord, bless you on the offer. Dear God, we thank you so much for another day that you've given us, and the many blessings that you give us each and every day. I also thank you for another opportunity to come to your church. And, uh, just pray your blessing upon the service tonight. I pray that we would be focused on you and what you have us to hear. Help the offering, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 in this taxi is very festive and loud. 
I have to cover some ridiculous Christmas concert tonight at the Carson Center. My editor's orders. What? I can't hear you. You're breaking up. I said, are you coming home for Christmas or not? You still haven't given me a straight answer. <sighs> Is this the only thing we can talk about anymore? Why are you so obsessed with this? I have told you multiple times, Casey. Mom really needs you home this Christmas. <laughs> what does that even mean? She needs me home. You realize you're just guilting me into this, right? Honestly, you should feel guilty about not visiting your widowed mother for two years. You always exaggerate, Stephen. And of course you have to throw out the widow thing to make me sound even more terrible. A month ago, you told me you couldn't come to Thanksgiving, but that you would try to make it home for Christmas. And I told Mom. Why in the world did you do that? I always say that just to be nice. Wow, Casey. Nice is definitely not a word I could use to describe you. This is exactly why I don't like coming home. Look, Casey, can you at least... No. You know what? At this point, you couldn't pay me to stomach another Christmas at home. Casey... I have to go. The concert is starting. Just tell her I can't come.
Casey. Hey, sorry I'm late. The traffic was terrible. It always is. Take a seat. Look, Casey, I don't want to take too much of your time, so I'll cut right to the chase. I read your review of Our Messiah's Birth. I told you that show was going to be a snooze fest. It wasn't a show. It was a concert. A traditional Christmas concert featuring some of the most renowned instrumentalists of our time. And I pointed that out, and I did it in a witty and ironic way. You say witty and ironic, the reader said cynical and cheeky. <laughs> you don't want to know how many complaints we've already got. You've got to be kidding. Casey. Okay, okay, I'll tone down the sarcasm. Just give me something with more meat. Well, exactly. That's exactly why I brought you in today. I'm giving you a special assignment. Finally, tell me it's the Prime Minister's visit. It's the Christmas issue. What? Christmas Eve special, full article, front page. About the Prime Minister? No, Casey. Full page article about, you know, family Christmas traditions. You've got to be kidding. Or the true meaning of Christmas. What did I do to deserve this? Or beloved Christmas carols. Really, whatever you want to cover. Everyone is crazy for warm and fuzzy Christmas content, thanks to all those holiday TV movies. I can't stand those movies. Well, the rest of America loves them, so you're going to channel that. Just make it merry and bright. But... And it better be good, and I better feel all warm and cozy inside when I read it. Mr. Parker, I literally can't. This is your last chance, Casey, if I sense a whiff of sarcasm. I got it, sir. Merry and bright. I suggest you head home for Christmas and enjoy the season. It could help inspire you. Didn't you tell me once that your mother pulls out all the stops for Christmas? You have no idea. Casey's coming home for Christmas! Well, what? Who said? She just told me that she couldn't come this year, Mom. Well, it must have been some kind of mistake because she is coming and she's almost here. Mom, that can't be right. She made it very clear. She wasn't coming. Surprise, everyone. Oh, she's here. I just knew you were going to come. I just knew it. Hey, Mom, it feels like I haven't seen you in a few months. Uh, 36 months to be exact. <laughs> I'm just so excited that you're here. I could first. I got your room ready, and I got that coffee that you like, and... She, uh, slaughtered the cat, uh, fatted cat for you. Steven, <laughs> isn't it great to have Casey home for Christmas? Well, it is a surprise, that's for sure. Good to see you too, Stevie. Oh, oh, it's already time for me to go. Can you two entertain each other for an hour or so? Where are you running off to? Oh, I have that rehearsal for our Christmas program. You still do that program every year? Oh, I know how you feel about all of that, so I won't even push it. You can just stay here. That's perfect. Huh? No, I want to go. What? <laughs> sure, it's been a long time. Maybe it'll get me in the Christmas <coughs> I Well, we would love to have you. There's always room. Are you joking? Well, you wouldn't go to the music. No, Stephen, I'm serious. And sure, Mom, all that sounds great. Sign me up. Oh, this makes me so happy. I can just, oh my god, I just, I need to eat my purse. <laughs> okay, what's going on here, Casey? What? Can't I enjoy a Christmas at home? Uh, so suddenly you're able to stomach it? I was just in a mood when I said that. Uh, and going to church with mom? You haven't darkened the door of a church in ages. People change, Stephen. Well, let's get going, Casey. Ready when you are. The first song in the program is the Wexford Carol. Remember that one? Vaguely. What's that one about again? Oh, it is a beautiful Irish carol that talks about remembering what God has done for us at Christmas time. Oh, the poetry is just beautiful. Good people all, this Christmas time, consider well and bear in mind what our good God for us has done in sending his beloved son. Are you taking notes, Casey? Huh? Well, excuse me if I'm interested in Christmas. See you later, Scrooge. Good. 
Whether the beautiful melodies that get stuck in our heads, the memories that draw, no, the timeless truths they teach. That's good. <clears throat> Each Christmas, the small country church of my childhood includes in their Christmas program that old favorite American hymn, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day, written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. What you may not know about this quaint carol is that it was composed under the bleakest of circumstances. In the summer of 1863, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow lost his beloved wife, Fanny, in a tragic fire, and he was severely wounded, trying desperately to rescue her from the flames. Then, as he was still recovering, his son ran away to join the Union Army, for the Civil War was raging in America. As winter approached, Henry's son went missing, and after weeks of searching, he found him near death. Henry entered that Christmas season with a heavy heart. Many know the sadness holidays can bring when we have lost a loved one or suffered a tragedy. But as Henry wrestled with these feelings, he heard the bells and thought of those words of those familiar quaint carols, and they inspired him to pen the words, then peal the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail. With peace on earth, good will to men. Hmm. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep.
That song has become very special to me. You know the author wrote it for his for after losing his beloved spouse. I know. I was just reading about it. You were? Uh, yeah. Wikipedia. <laughs> Wicca who? Oh, Casey. What? Oh. <laughs> oh, Casey. <laughs> it's Kenneth Martin. Who? Wait, let me fix your hair. What? Oh, and stand up straight. Mother. Kenneth. Ago, and most importantly, he's hey, Mrs. Harris, single. <laughs> and then I was just telling my daughter Casey all about you. Yeah, all the juicy details. <laughs> nice to meet you, Casey. I, uh, <laughs> I just remembered. I, uh, I have to. Uh, Mom. Oh, Barbara, did you just call me? We know she didn't call you, Mother. <laughs> Sorry about that. My mom's a character. <laughs> Yeah, you've got that right. She's one of the nicest people here at church. Yeah. So, come here often? Every week. Well, <laughs> lately. Did you just move to town? I don't remember seeing you here before. No, I just grew, or I grew up down just down the road, but I only recently got saved and started attending. Okay, that explains it. I grew up in this church. Oh, I envy you. This place has been such a lifeline for me. I've been growing so much lately. Really? I mean, yeah, that sounds great. I just love how everything is so Bible-based and gospel-centered, especially this Christmas program we're all working on. Yeah, it's definitely both of those things. Uh, what specifically do you like about the program so much? The music, particularly. It's crazy to me that I've heard a lot of these carols for years, but I never noticed the words or understood what they were really saying. Mm-hmm, go on. Like this one, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Yeah, every fourth grader knows that one. The words are incredibly powerful. For example? Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth. Born to give them second birth.
not here. Have you tried her cell phone? Yeah, I've tried multiple times and she's not answering. Could you just tell her the deadline has been moved up by 24 hours? They want the full Christmas special in-house on the 22nd for the layout team. Christmas special? You mean as in a Christmas article? Yeah, you got it. And tell her she doesn't have to call me back. Oh, and tell her Mary and Bright. So that's why she's here. I guess some people never change. It's just amazing to me that these gospel lyrics and doctrinal truths are sung everywhere for a whole month. It really makes this the perfect time of the year to share the gospel. Yeah, I guess so, but I just feel like you have to be careful about how you come across, though. What do you mean? I mean, it's fine to believe in Jesus, but you don't want to offend people that don't, you know what I mean? I think I'm misunderstanding you. It sounds like you're saying you shouldn't witness to others? No, no, I just think that if you preach too much, it can turn people off. I live in the real world where you don't just talk about religion. It's taboo. And, I don't know, offending people is a sin too, right? Casey, the gospel is offensive. Jesus himself told us that we would be hated and persecuted for his namesake. You're misunderstanding me. I just think that we should love people and not judge them. But when you say things like, you're wrong, or agree with me, or you're going to hell, it turns people off. I grew up in this stuff. I know how judgy it can be. Well, I didn't grow up in this stuff. And all I know to go by is the Bible. And in the Bible, Jesus clearly says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I know. It also says that we are all lost in sin, headed for hell, and only faith in Christ can save us. Telling a lost world about Christ is the most loving thing we can do, even if it offends them. The Bible tells us to tell them. I know what the Bible says. But it sounds like you don't believe it. Sure, I believe it. I grew up in it. I just think we should be more inclusive. The gospel is absolutely inclusive. Whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, and God isn't willing that any should perish. But the gospel is also absolutely exclusive. There is only one true God, who had only one begotten Son, whose death and resurrection provides the only way to heaven. And only by faith in Jesus Christ can one have eternal life. He is the only way.
you? Yeah, Mom. Well, did you have a good time? Isn't he nice and handsome? Mom, I just knew the two of you would hit it off. I saw you two sitting there on the stairs, staring deeply into each other's eyes. Actually, Mom, we were arguing. Arguing? What were you doing that for? Whatever you had in your head about the two of us, you can forget about it. We live on different planets. <laughs> well, honey, <laughs> you need to move to his planet because there aren't many men like him in our universe. <laughs> That was actually really clever. Or did you think you got your dramatic flair in your writing? <laughs> oh, but seriously, Casey, you two seem perfect together. Mom, it's not going to work. <laughs> Nothing little mistletoe can fix. Mother! Oh, what? I'm just teasing. But tell me, what happened? He's just like the other church guys. Church guys. What exactly is that supposed to mean? Can we not go through this again, Mom? Are you saying that you're still struggling with your faith? I'm not struggling with my faith, Mom. I have my own version of faith. It just isn't yours. But I, I thought things were different. You seemed like you had changed. But you didn't change, Casey, did you? <laughs> Great, now it's two on one. Your editor called while you were gone. Your deadline has been moved up. He called here? Yep, but I figured you should be all right since you probably got plenty of material for your holiday article, Helping Mom at Church. <laughs> what is going on? I'm writing an article for the Herald. It's on Christmas traditions. And that's why you came home. There's always an angle, Casey. Yes, partly, but also to see you. Stephen, don't go. I'm sorry, Mom. I didn't mean to ruin Christmas. Oh, you didn't ruin Christmas. Really? Well, maybe Christmas Eve. <laughs> it's not Christmas. I'm just kidding, Casey. I'm just glad to have you home. I wish we could just all get along and just not talk about religion or faith and just leave it alone. Oh, honey, that will never happen. <laughs> we care about you too much for that. You know, I try to tread carefully with you sometimes, but what I don't get to say, I pray. Well, at least you still love me. Stephen hates me. He most certainly does not. He just has a hard time watching you drift away. We know that you know the truth. You know you need to be in church and be following the Lord, but you don't seem to care at all. Mom, it's not that simple. But it is simple. Do you know Christ as your Savior? Are you living for him? You haven't been the same since your father passed. Please don't take this the wrong way, Mom, but look at yourself. You and Dad went to church every week. You were always such good Christians. And then before even Dad gets to his 60th birthday, God lets him die and leaves you all alone with a struggling business and debts. Where was he? Earlier today, I tried to write about Dad's old Christmas gift tradition, but I couldn't. Remember how he used to wrap a picture of our family of him for himself and put it under the tree? So he could remember what a wonderful gift God had given to him. But now he's gone. God took him away. Couldn't he have kept Dad alive? Maybe he doesn't care. Oh, honey, you don't know God. God is so good. Even when I don't feel like he's good, he is good. Even if everything is falling apart. He is still in control, and he's still good. God isn't the author of sin. Yeah, I know. Mankind caused sin. No, honey, you don't know. You don't trust in him because you don't know him. God is so good that the Bible says there's no darkness in him. He's so good, he's, he gives blessings to the just and the unjust. He's perfect and holy, and his name is love. I know you've learned this your whole life, but it just hasn't really touched your heart. God is so good, he gave his only son to die for us. And every good thing on this earth is his handiwork. And every blessing in my life, I can thank him for. And though you don't even realize it yet, every good and perfect gift in your life comes straight down from the Father of Lights.
conversation from earlier. I can't. I'm really not up for it. Well, what's wrong? I don't know. I'm scared. Scared? Yes, I'm scared. My whole life I have always just been a Christian. Like it was something to fall back on or it was there in case I needed it. But my own mother just basically said I'm not saved. Just an hour ago, you basically said you didn't believe the Bible. But now you're scared because you do believe it? I guess I just wanted to believe in my own way or on my own terms. But of course I want to be saved, but what do I need to do? You need to be saved from your sins, saved from yourself, saved from being separated from God. Right. I am separated from God. I feel it. Casey, I know exactly what you need to do. I just did it a few months ago. You just need to repent of your sins and accept Christ as your Savior. But how can I do that now? How do I admit that I've lived most of my life as a lie? What will everyone think? Casey, none of that matters. All that matters is that God loves you. He sees your need, knows your faults, and he gave you a way of salvation. It's so simple, yet so easy to miss. I've been missing it for almost 30 years. I just need to get saved. Isn't it the best feeling in the world to finally realize what you've been missing? Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved. That word has so much more meaning now. I can be saved. It reminds me of the verse, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins.
Um, I need to say something. I have more to say too. While you were gone, I wrote out all the verses I couldn't think of earlier and all the things I wanted to say but <laughs> couldn't remember. First, Mom, I just got saved. What? Mom, I wasn't saved. Oh, honey, I've known that for years, but I was just hoping I was wrong. But I just got saved like five minutes ago. What happened? I ran into Kenneth and we started talking more about faith and salvation. And I just realized that I had been lost this whole time and in desperate need of a savior. Oh, Casey, I'm so happy I can't see straight. After all these years, oh, I'm gonna hug you too. Oh, that's a tight grip. <laughs> oh, your brother. I've got to tell your brother. Stephen. I'm not, no, not Stephen. What? My brother isn't going to believe it. He's probably gonna think I'm faking it to try to stay longer or to date you. Date me? <laughs> he has a wild imagination. Come in here, Stephen. You're not going to believe what happened to your sister. Yep, probably not. Oh, I, can't, I can't face him. Just tell him what you believe, what you really believe. Well, what is it? Stephen, tonight I decided that I believe in God, that I believe Jesus Christ died for my sins, that I desperately need salvation from my sins. And, well, I'm sure I'm leaving something out, but that's about it. Casey... You're not annoyed at me? Are you kidding? I think it's the happiest day of my life. I have been praying for this for years. You have? Me too! <laughs> I thought we might have a prodigal sibling moment for a second. Uh, are you kidding? I'll go get the fatted calf myself. Wait, guys, it's a quarter till. Oh, we have to go. We'll be late for the concert. Are you coming, Casey? Wouldn't miss it for anything. Okay, Casey, let's see what we have here. Each December, we set aside time to reflect upon the birth of a baby, a birth that to most of the world seemed common and insignificant, but the child born in Bethlehem that night was no ordinary child. Prophets foretold of him, and angels proclaimed his birth. He has many names, Emmanuel, Jesus, the Lamb of God, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords, the way, the truth, and the life. This Christmas, let us come and worship this Jesus, high and lifted up, who left heaven's glories to come to earth and die on a cross for our sins. Come, you faithful, you believers, and join your voices with the angels in heaven and the saints of all the ages in worship and adoration of this Savior, who is Christ the Lord.
Thank you, choir and cast, for your hard work and excellent presentation this evening and wonderful, wonderful truth presented in the program because it's Bible truth and so thankful for that. Uh, my desire is uh, not to preach a new sermon to you tonight, but to uh, kind of reiterate what we heard of this evening in the message of the gospel. And I love uh, how the Holy Spirit works. Uh, I'm seeking direction about what to do tonight, and the Lord led me to Matthew chapter 1, and then yesterday I was in and part of the rehearsal, and lo and behold, it happened to be the same text that was mentioned tonight. It's just so amazing how the Lord does that, isn't it? So if you have your Bible with you, I invite you to join me in Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. And if you'll notice with me, beginning in verse 20, Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20, you've been sitting for a few moments, if you're willing and able, out of respect for the scriptures, would you stand with me? I'm just going to read a couple verses here, beginning with verse 20. Of course, Matthew's account here of the Christmas story, verse 20 of Matthew 1, but while he thought on these things... Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. I want to talk to you for a few moments about the present, the gift the present that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for what we've received already tonight. I pray you'll guide us into these truths that you've impressed upon my heart for each of us this evening. Lord, we ask that there be any among us that do not know you as their personal Lord and Savior, that tonight they would get that settled as we witnessed in the program this evening. Lord, be wonderful for someone who came tonight not at peace with you, to find that peace, to trust you as our personal Lord and Savior. Then, Lord, for those of us who know you, Lord, I pray that we would recommit ourselves to enjoying the gift of your presence this Christmas and throughout the new year. Again, Lord, we ask your blessing. I pray for your filling. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for standing. You may be, you may be seated. We're aware of the fact that this was a miraculous conception, the virgin birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, this was, of course, a prophecy that was fulfilled, and that prophecy ful being fulfilled uh, provided the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ, the promise of a Redeemer to be delivered. And, of course, Jesus is the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. As was presented in the program this evening, there's only one way. Jesus said, I am the way. The truth and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. There, there aren't many doors into heaven, there's only one, and Amen. Jesus Christ is that door. And I'm thankful anyone can enter through that door. You can enter into heaven through that door, but it's only through the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's a miraculous conception. I think also about the fact of the, the, the merciful mercifulness of Redemption, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. You know, it is of God's mercy that he would give us a first thought. Let alone a million. We often say, well, I wouldn't give that a second thought. And we might think, well, I don't know that God cares about me. The fact of the matter is, he does. He proved that at Calvary. Uh, God said, uh, the, uh, recorded for us in John chapter 3 and uh, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life, everlasting life. Enjoying the fact that we know Christ is our, our Savior. It's a, it's a merciful re redemption because, because of our sin. He's, he saves us from our sin. He saved me from my sin. He wants to save you from your sin. 
And we're among many tonight who have received that salvation. Some of you were here for our Thanksgiving program, and we talked about uh, the word saved and salvation and what, what those terms mean and, and, and how that you can't describe it in one word. You know, our Lord's the same way. He can't be, you, you can't contain God in one word. You can't contain Christ in one word. Wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. You know, he is, he's described by two names in our text tonight. In, in, in verse 21, that thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. That's a wonderful thing to know that your sin is forgiven and that God is your Savior. And I just want to challenge you uh, to, tonight to, to search your heart. Many of us perhaps know the Christmas story. Many of us would know that Jesus is the Savior. I'm preaching to you truth from the Bible. We've read, we've heard it in the program tonight. We understand we're sinners and sin has a price. Would you agree with me? Amen. We're sinners and sin has a price and we understand it's a terrible price. But it's a just price. It's separation from God for all eternity because God is perfectly holy and sin cannot abide in his presence. Our sin separates us from God. My sin separated me from God. But Jesus is the Savior who will save us. He'll redeem us. He'll buy us back from our sin, our, our just sin penalty, which is separation from God for all eternity and, and in a place that's prepared for the devil and his angels, a place the Bible calls hell. The descriptions of hell and the word of God are terrible. It's a horrible place. Torment forever. You know, there's no need for any one to go there. Sometimes we might think, well, that person, for those deeds, they deserve to go to hell. You might think about some of the things that have been broadcast in our world in the recent, recent months, these horrible acts that were committed, and we might think those people deserve to go to hell. Some people might even be so bold as to say something like this, uh, they should go there. You know, the fact of the matter is that it's not about the, the badness of my sin or your sin that sends us to hell because all sin and any sin would send someone to hell. Now, there are dastardly acts that need, people need to be brought to justice, and we understand that. We're living in a world that is, uh, has a misunderstanding about what justice is. Uh, when, when we, we don't enforce laws and we don't bring the criminals to justice, we have, we have the chaos that we're observing and enduring in our, in our world today. Amen. God, God loves us whether you think you're not a very bad sinner or you think you're a really bad sinner. Or any point in between, your sin separates you from God. Jesus is the Savior who died for your sin and for mine and for the sins of the whole world, the Bible tells us. It's a merciful redemption, a miraculous conception. I, I want you to think also for just a moment about the other word that is used to name God. If you look down at verse 22 again, now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God with us. So I see not only the miraculous conception and the merciful redemption, but I want us to think about this. He's a, he's a matchless companion. Yeah. God with us. He's not only Jesus, the Savior, save, saves me from our sin. He'll save you from your sin. If you're here tonight and have never trusted Christ as your Savior, Jesus will save you from your sin. But listen, beyond that, God desires to be your Emmanuel. He desires to be with you. Amen. Might I suggest a little bit of a play on words? God desires to give you the gift of his presence, which is a matchless presence. 
and God with us. To those of us who know the Lord, can I ask you to search your own heart and your own life? Perhaps tonight would be a night where you would say, I need to renew my relationship with God so that I can enjoy the present of His presence in my life again. You know, God not only saves us from our sin, and that is a wonderful thing. Would you agree? That we could go to heaven and spend eternity with God and not have to worry about going to hell. I'm thankful for that. If you're here tonight and you don't have that settled, in a moment I'm going to ask you to get that settled. We don't play games and don't do tricks here. I'm, I'm being forthright with you. I'm going to ask you to get that settled. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, I'm going to ask you to, to trust Him as your Savior tonight. To those of us who do know Him, listen, we, we're living in a world where a lot of people claim to have received the gospel, and, and maybe you're like the, the young lady here presented in the, in the program, and you've heard the gospel all your life, but you know deep down in your heart you've never personally repented of your sin and received Christ. I plead with you tonight, trust Christ as your Savior. If you're here tonight, you this is the first time you've heard the gospel. Trust Him tonight. Trust Him tonight. But many of us perhaps would know the Lord and we've trusted Him and, and uh, we've had varying degrees of, of a right relationship with God. I want, I want to ask you tonight, the question I have for you, the, the call I have for you this evening is to renew your relationship with God so that this Christmas, the gift that you would enjoy, a fresh and anew, would be the presence of God. Realized in your life again. And we know that once someone trusts Christ as their Savior, they are eternally saved, and I'm thankful for that. Amen. We can't lose our salvation. It's eternal life. If we could lose it, it wouldn't be eternal. Amen. It's everlasting life. It's, it's eternal. And once we're placed in the family of God, we're in forever. I'm thankful for that. But listen, we who do know the Lord, sometimes we allow sin... We allow a poor attitude, a poor spirit toward God, toward His Word, toward God's people and God's Word uh, to disrupt a right relationship with Him. I plead with you tonight, if you know Him as Jesus, the Savior of your sin, are you enjoying Emmanuel? God with us. Or do you view the things of God as a drudgery or something I have to endure? We've got to go to church again. I have to do this. I have to. No, we should enjoy God. It's Emmanuel. It's God with us. If you're his child, you should enjoy him. Listen, if you're here tonight and you don't know, you're like the young lady here. Would you trust him tonight? Would you trust him tonight? Let's have heads bowed and eyes closed if we may. I want to challenge you to not miss the gift of heaven and not miss the gift of living in Christ today. My first question is for those of us here this evening who know Christ is our Savior. We know we're saved. But yet, you know, you know in your heart, you'd be honest before God tonight, in the Spirit of God working, you know that you need to renew your relationship to Christ and live in his presence as you can and you should. If you're here tonight as a believer and you would say, Pastor Jim, I do need to renew my relationship with Christ tonight. Maybe the Lord has identified some things in your life. You need to get right with him. You know, I'm thankful you can get right where, right where you sit. You can talk to God in your heart right where you sit. And I challenge you to do that even now as I'm proposing this opportunity to you. But would you ask the Lord, would you be willing to ask the Lord to forgive you of whatever that may be in your life, whether it be a coldness toward Him or, or a, you know there's sin in your life, you need to get right with Him. You ask the Lord to forgive you of that sin. And you ask the Lord to renew your relationship to Him again so that you can enjoy the present of His presence. Emmanuel, God with us. If you're here tonight as a believer and you would say, Pastor Jim, the Lord has spoken to my heart about some things and I need to renew my relationship to Christ tonight. And I want to do that right here where I sit. You can do that right where you sit. You can ask the Lord, forgive you. You're a child of God. You ought to know how to get things right with God. 
You can do that right where you sit. You say, preacher, Pastor Jim, that's 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 what that's my decision tonight. That's my my commitment tonight, and I'm going to renew my relationship to Christ. He gets things right with him. I want to renew my relationship to Christ so I can enjoy the gift of his presence again. If that's you here tonight, would you slip your hand up? Anybody like that? Many hands around the room. Praise the Lord for that. God's worked in your heart. Let's, let's be honest with God. We might as well be, right? Thank you. Very good. Very good. Wonderful. You may take them down. I hope that you'll seek the Lord, that you can keep that commitment that you've made tonight. Enjoy Emmanuel. Enjoy the gift of his presence. Perhaps you're here tonight and you'd say, Pastor Jim, when I came in this evening, I had some questions about salvation, some questions perhaps about the gospel, or the program tonight has created some questions in my heart and my mind. And I'm concerned about whether or not I know Christ as my Savior. I'm not sure that I'm, that I'm saved, that I've received Christ. And I, I've got some questions about that. If that's you here tonight, I... I would ask you as well, as heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I'm looking, uh, so I'll observe, but hands gone up. And if God has spoken to your heart and you say, Pastor Jim, I'm, I'm not certain that I've received Christ as my Savior. I don't have that peace in my life of knowing that Jesus, the one who will save us from our sin, I don't, I don't have that peace in my life that I've received Christ as my Savior, and I'm concerned about it. If that's you here tonight, would you slip your hand up so I'd be aware of your concern? You say, Pastor Jim, I'm just not certain that I know for sure that I'm saved. I'm, I'm concerned about it. That's you. Would you slip your hand up? Anybody at all? Just slip it up quietly. I'll acknowledge a hand's gone up. I won't embarrass you in any way. Again, I'm being direct with you as I've committed. And I'll, I'll be uh, honest with you. Anybody like that at all? Say, I'm not sure that I'm saved. I'm concerned about that. Would you slip your hand up so we can be a help to you? Anybody like that at all? How many of you here tonight? Let me ask the question in reverse. How many of you here tonight would say, Pastor, I'm not all I should be, but I'm sure thankful that I do know Jesus Christ as my Savior. He's not only the Savior, he's my Savior. I've trusted Christ as my Savior. If that's you, would you hold your hand up? I have many hands all over the room. Praise the Lord for that. Wonderful. You may take them down. All right, let me ask the first question, or the second question one more time. If you're here tonight, you say, Preacher, I'm not sure I'm saved. I'm concerned about it. Would you slip your hand up so I'd be aware of your concern? Anybody like that at all? All right, let's stand together, shall we? <clears throat> Our Father, we thank you for what we've received tonight the truth presented in the program, the truth we see here in Matthew chapter 1. Lord, I thank you for these who recommitted, desire to renew uh, their lives to you in whatever area you've spoken to them about. Lord, I pray that they, they've, they've asked you, they've, they've got that right with you right where they, they sit. Lord, uh, I've found that it's good to, to seal uh, decisions I make in my seat in the church service uh, at the altar. And Lord, I pray that if you would lead some to do that, that they would respond and and commit uh, themselves to you afresh and anew. And Lord, I pray you'd give them uh, the sweetness and the blessing of knowing and realizing your presence afresh and anew again. And then, Lord, perhaps there's some here tonight, although they didn't raise their hand, they're concerned about whether or not they're saved. Lord, I pray that, that they would respond tonight. Allow us to take your word and show them how they personally can trust Christ as their personal Savior. You are Jesus. You are the Savior. You desire to be each of ours. And Lord, I pray that if there be any among us who don't know you, that they trust you this evening. We ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. What we're going to do is we're going to have a hymn.